Um, so I started out as a, as a pediatrician um, back in Germany, and I did some of my subspecialty training for metabolism in, um, in London. And at the time, metabolism was my, my passion. And uh, you know, this really was driven by a curiosity about biochemical pathways. And I started out being a general pediatrician with some biochemical interest that you know, I always got excited about those pathways and how these pathways shifts. And then obviously the first conditions were already well known and established at the time. And I thought, well, that might be actually where I find my calling by looking after patients with these inborn error of metabolism. And then those inborn, that was kind of the first uh, exposure to rare diseases. All of these conditions are rare diseases themselves. But I really understood that um, kind of connection with genetics only when I was asked to give, um, uh, when I was in London, I was, you know, did my fellowship in, in metabolism. And then uh, someday I got a phone call from Texas from Dr. Baudet, who um, ran the, uh, was the director of the department at the time. And he said, oh, we heard about some of your metabolic work. Would you like to come over and give us a talk? And so I, you know, I traveled to Houston gave a presentation and then while talking to the faculty there and talking to Dr. Baudet, uh, who really brought me into that field of rare disease, he said, well, have you ever considered doing a fellowship in genetics? And until that moment, until that conversation happened, I actually haven't given much thought to, to genetics um, or fellowship or rare diseases at all. For me, it was metabolism was kind of a fairly narrow, narrow field. So, you know, he convinced me to move to the States, uh, do the genetics and biochemical genetics fellowship at Baylor. And this was really when everything took off. That's when my passion developed and uh, really developed at a center that was already well known for its work on rare diseases. Um, and then, you know, it accelerated from there. Um, and th that's, I, that's kind of the starting point for my journey with rare diseases. And it kind of then developed into, you know, I was in charge of newborn screening back in Europe. So that added another layer, early diagnosis, shortening the diagnostic odyssey through newborn screening. Um, and then I had exposure uh, to other conditions uh, back in Miami. And then I was very fortunate to, to be uh, recruited to, uh, to Boston Children's where I'm today. And here, I mean, the exposure is everywhere. You walk through the lobby and you actually uh, experience patients with rare diseases. We see so many patients in clinic and on the inpatient service that it's a very, a very, uh, you know, refreshing uh, work. And it's, it's kind of everything is uh, new every day. It's not something that's repetitive or boring. Um, and then I had the opportunity to open a lab. And now, you know, the connection between clinic and lab, that's also uh, extremely rewarding because you identify certain aspects you bring it back to the patient and you see the patient benefit. And I think that's the ultimate goal. Uh, families are happy when we reach a diagnosis, they are happy to see uh, that we work on therapies and some of the therapies already materialize into reality. Um, and I think that's the most rewarding part of the work to see the patient and the family benefit from, from all the work that's ongoing. So kind of the, the type of research I'm actively involved in the lab, on the laboratory side is on uh, essentially two conditions. One condition, as I mentioned earlier, is Kabuki syndrome. That's a rare neurodevelopmental disorder that affects the epigenetic machinery, but it's actually not that uncommon. It's as frequent as one in 30,000. Um, so we follow locally about 80 to 90 patients now and um, know, uh, have been in touch uh, for our research studies with about 200, 250 patients. Um, the research, again, is kind of ongoing. That's developing novel therapies for this condition where there is a big unmet need. The second condition is Neiman Pick Type C, um, um, again, a rare uh, neurodevelopmental disorder that's, in fact, a disorder of cholesterol homeostasis, so it's an inborn error of cholesterol metabolism. There, again, we are looking at innovative therapies to slow down disease progression and eventually 
be able to treat this condition. Um, the other conditions um, we are working on, so on the clinical trial side, for example, we run uh, the, the first gene therapy trial for phenylketonuria, which is one of the first uh, recognized in bone errors of metabolism um, with some success. And then on the clinical side, we are essentially, I'm essentially exposed to the entire spectrum of uh, genetic conditions and metabolic conditions with a focus on um, more complex cases. So I frequently see so-called second opinion cases where the family seeks a second opinion regarding a diagnosis um, or complex metabolic patients where a diagnosis has not been reached. Um, in addition, I, you know, I participate in the general practice or anyone who has a genetics concern you know, can be referred to the clinic and I would be happy to see them.